Hi all, I have another interesting game to show you of Leela Chess against Stockfish 6. This uh, was in the Formatic Gauntlet uh, set out by John D, I believe. So this game with Leela playing white plays d4, we have d5, c4, e6. And here actually the move knight c3 is played. Which is pretty standard, you'd think. Uh, but I'm going to have a. I'm going to tell you something about this now. C5. So this is the Tarras defense, and the Henning Scara Gambit is a possibility here. If instead Knight F3, according to Wiki, if you play Knight F3 here instead, you're kind of partly you might be wanting to avoid this uh, Henning Scara Gambit because uh, by playing it like this. Uh, you need to be prepared at least for c5 because here now uh, Leela plays c takes d5. We have c takes d4, which is the, the Henning scorer. Now, the best way to get the pawn back is not to play queen takes d4 because then there's a tempo gain with knight c6, which I've fallen into myself, especially on, on bullet chess. I, I, I realize after what have I done? I've given my opponent a massive initiative. So yeah, in bullet chess, this is ex extremely dangerous, especially this Henning Scorer. This position, even though it technically might be a bit better for white, this here, for example, black can even get the queens off, have a very, very active position. For example, there, black's totally win or winning already. White has to tread uh, very, very, very carefully here. E3 might be possible for with a small edge. But um, generally, here, this is avoided there's a better move which is queen a4 check so if you have to face this especially on fast time controls queen a4 check because it actually means it's a slight improvement of the position now after e takes d5 we have queen takes d5 so this is a kind of improvement here that if the bishop moves you can take off and disrupt black's castling rights so uh, we have this position, Henning Scorer Gambit territory. Uh, so uh, yeah, Aaron Summerskill, when I was a junior, was a uh, he he had this as one of his pet openings. I think he gave it up later. Maybe people became very prepared against him, uh, but it can be exceptionally dangerous. Uh, so knight c6, knight f3 was played. Knight f6, queen d1, and here bishop c5. And the most trodden move here is e3. But to me, yes, I remember Aaron Sumskull's, some some of his games vaguely, I think they were a bit like this. It's brutal with opposite side casting with queen e7. I think this is why he he liked playing it. Because if we have this position with bishop e2, black castles queen side, and we have a very, very aggressive start position indeed. You have to really know what you're doing with white. Uh, but anyway, in this game, actually, Leela doesn't play the main move e3 which you need to know quite well but instead plays a3 this is this is played as well but a bit rarer than e3 we have now bishop e6 queen takes d8 rook takes d8 so black here has what seems to be a dangerous initiative a dangerous lead in development e3 is played so this closes his own bishop but this is a position to batten down the hatches and weather the weather the storm so to speak. So bishop e2, rook f e8, white castles, bishop d6, now h3. Uh, yeah, and I mean, already you might think, well, h3? Because isn't there the possibility of bishop b3? Uh, if, you, if, if white gets a bit too aggressive, this could really backfire. For example, a5 and knight e5, it's, it's pretty dangerous. So Leader's keeping low with this and allowing what seems to be quite a restrictive and painful looking move. Bishop B3. However, there is a plan here. This isn't as bad as it looks. White plays Bishop D2 with the solid idea of Bishop E1. So knight E5, now Bishop E1 is possible after Rook F1. Rook F C1 first. But Bishop E1 is made possible now. Uh, here if white had taken on e5, bishop takes, this position closes in that rook. Black should be at least equal. So it's important 
to give the rook some life here. Every move is is critical here, especially against Stockfish six. So rook f c one is possible and is played. Knight takes, bishop takes. Now bishop e five hitting this bishop. Bishop retreats to e one. Rook e seven. And now here, white has to be extremely clever. At least white has some pressure on b seven. So Lila opens up some possibilities now. Guess what is played? It seems to be a passive position. What would you play here to try and activate stuff to get things moving? White to play. Okay. A4. Yeah, A4. We have uh, G6 and now A5. So the rook's just activating here. And also, importantly, there's another neat feature of A5. Guess what Lila plays in this position, which tactically is wonderful. So if you're in this kind of bind, this is something to remember now. Uh, an unbinding dynamic way of playing here. White to play. If I give you five seconds, what would you play in this position to try and unravel? There seems to be horrible pressure against B2, horrible pressure on the D file. Black's pieces seem to be controlling all the key squares. Black seems to have ample compensation for a pawn. But there is a, a nice resource in Knight A4. Now, on the surface, hold on, Knight A4, doesn't this mean bishop takes and bishop takes b2 well this doesn't work so well bishop takes is not played because here rook fb1 and then rook ab4 neatly doubling rooks against b7 in this particular position is is nice and sufficient so if rook dd7 we're just taking anyway and if b6 uh we're just going to uh, take the pawn anyway and white's going to end up with a nice advantage here so basically, yeah, this is actually ignored. Bishop d5 is played. Okay, we have rook d1, rook e d7, and now Lila takes on d5 and is happy to get some exchanges. Okay, now knight c4 is played, hitting the rook. Rook d8, f4, and black doesn't want to leave a nasty pin here. What doesn't want in this position? So the bishop goes back. King f2 in advance of bishop c5 to protect e3. Bishop c5, king e2, and the king's nicely in the center. It's like Capablanca's playing this now. <laughs> king comes to the center. It's beautiful play. I know you might find that strange, but it's like when Lula's under great pressure from the opening, yeah, it's, it's this calmness, this Capablanca style is invoked, which is kind of nice to appreciate if you can. So rook e8, bishop d2 h6 and now another move unraveling things as well because it seems to be a passive position now because of the e3 issue guess what unravels white's position here if i give you five seconds what would you play okay rook a4 yeah just activating the rook getting the rook in the game like this and already controlling a central square square as well we have g5 Rook c4 hitting the bishop. Bishop moves. Now king f3 getting out of this awkward pin. Unpinning and protecting f4 even better. Rook d8. Rook d4 pinning that bishop now to the rook. a6. Now another great move. Knight a4. The knight is wanting to use the c5 square to attack these poor pawns now. G takes. And guess what Leela plays in this position? White's well, already doing well, in fact. White could just routinely recapture, but in fact, the niftier looking knight c5 is played, offering a pawn there, because Lena knows she's getting it back pretty soon. So bishop e7 with a big advantage now in the end game. Yeah, look at this. Two to one pawn majority over here. Bishop e7, knight c5. Not minding the bishop against the knight end game, so really nice end game judgment. Uh, but it's a good position in any case. There's probably other ways of winning as well. But now the king is putting more pressure down the queen side. Gonna want to come down the queen side or the center. So here, bishop e3, h5, h4, locking down all of black's pawns. 
this is just mastery of the end game f4 bishop takes f4 knight a7 king d5 king f5 g3 knight c8 the game ended here this, uh, let's see what would happen why it could just infiltrate with king c6 king b7 take this pawn it's a winning a pawn of course much faster than anything black can do so i thought this game was quite interesting from the point of view of uh coping with the gigantic pressure of of a major tarish defense gambit the henning scorer gambit which caused a lot of fear in all of uh, Aaron Summerskill's opponents when he was a junior rising to become a grandmaster. So <laughs> he, I'm sure there was plenty of other British exponents. It's, it's quite a dangerous uh, gambit or worldwide exponents, but it's quite a dangerous gambit in the Tarash. And apparently is one of the reasons why knight f3 is sometimes preferred over knight c3. So a little bit of trivia there for you as well. Hope you got something from this game and the unraveling resources that it, that was, uh, that were used. Okay. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.